Hello, uh, YouTube. This is Matt Poland, and I guess we're going to play a, another live blitz game today. Oh, it's a bad day out there. All right. No one is accepting. Uh, here we go. Four-minute game, and I'll play knight c6. And I'll try e5 again. See see what happens. See if I can play this a little more convincingly than last time. See, I played bishop c5 last time, and my opponent had a b4 resource. So I need to I need to watch out. I'm gonna try this again, bishop c5, because I like the bishop on this diagonal. But I'm, I need to watch out for b4 possibilities when I play uh, you know when I play d6. All right, bishop d3, that sort of cuts down on my f5 plan. Um, so I'll just play, like, I'll just play my knight to f6 first. And then, hmm. Now, see, I was going to castle, which allows me to, uh, to play d6 without worrying about b4. But maybe since he played this knight move, knight e2, Maybe I can profit from knight g4 with the early attack on f2. If he castles, I'll have queen h4. Knight e2 is a very committal move. It, it makes his king side um, vulnerable to attack. The, the best square is definitely f3, you know, defensively. Either f3 or f1, you know, for, uh, for the king's knight. Uh, yeah, his his knights are really screwed up now. He's he's obviously thinking because he can't see a way to a good way to defend against the threat of bishop takes f2, or rather knight takes f2. And if he castles, then uh, I think I just win material with queen h4. So yeah, I mean this structure, bishop d3, knight e2, in the, against the king's Indian attack. I mean not the king against the king's Indian defense rather, uh, is is a valid way to play. You know the formation, but because of this bishop on c5 and this early trouble on uh, f2, I don't think I don't think it's playable here. I mean it just goes to show you know every position is unique, and you know you gotta respect the differences. In the position. Um, all right. So what do I take with now? If I take, I, I don't have g3 available to my queen, so I can't play. If bishop takes check, then king h1. I will not be able to play queen g3. So if I take with knight here, threatening the discovery. Yes, yeah, obviously the best move. I mean, you can't rook take because it just queen takes, and I'm attacking his queen, and if he plays queen e1, I have uh, knight takes, double check. So this is just, yes, yeah, this, this looks like a winning position. All right, so he's letting me get the doubled, the double check. Um, so knight takes h3, he has to move his king to h4, h1. And then knight moves, and he has no moves. So takes. I won. And he'll probably resign, because I can just play like knight g1, mate next move. All right. Um, all right, that was a short game. Let me seek. All right, seek a three-minute game now. All right, I'll play king pawn. Um, I'll play knight c3. Why not? Vienna game. Okay, this is an interesting move. Never had this, never seen this here before. Um, hmm. Um, I'm just gonna play... Now I'm gonna play d4. 
because if he takes, I can take with queen, and he cannot bring it the knight out to c6 to, uh, to chase my queen. So because of his early commit, uh, commitment to c6, you know, d4 seems reasonable. Okay, so now, so now I guess I just want to develop my bishop quickly in castle queenside. Thinking like maybe bishop f4. All right, bishop f4 makes sense here, followed by castle queenside. My opponent needs to get some development going, or he will be in big trouble. So yeah, I mean, I I like barely felt like playing chess this today, but um, I know I'm having some really good games. C5. I'll put him in check. And depending on which PC blocks with, I gotta drop back with my queen to Alright here, what do I where do I want to drop back here? I think I want to drop back to D three. Yep. Guarding my, uh, overprotecting my e4 pawn. See, my knight, my knight can jump into to, uh, to d5 here. Uh, I got some pressure on the backward d pawn. I can castle and with my rook get more pressure on the the d file. I mean, he did gain a tempo by attacking my queen, sure, but he left behind a square. He left behind the d5 square. And as a result, his d pawn on d6 is weaker. So, you know, any, any pawn move, I mean, any pawn move gains, you know, two squares, or one if it's a rook pawn. But it also gives up two squares, at least. You know, in the case of a pawn's double move, it gives up more than two squares. So, I'll, I'll just castle here. I mean, clearly, because of my opponent's early pawn moves, he is in very deep trouble. And this, uh, he's simply hanging a pawn here. Mm. Do I take and double him up? Yes, I think so. No, I will play to... Overprotect my e4 pawn. Now I can play against his doubled pawns, in addition to being up a pawn. Plus I have the def custody of the d-file. Hmm. This protects this, also threatens c5. He's got 40 seconds left. Um, I guess I can just take on c5. I don't see anything particularly dangerous about this. All right. Time to go for simplification. Queen b3, hitting e6 and also threatening a queen trade. He cannot. He can't dodge the queen trade and hold the uh, e6 pawn. So yeah, this is. I'll I'll gain a tempo first. With uh, with knight h3. All right, takes. I won. And then it's gonna play like rook g1. But my opponent, uh, my opponent failed on time. But yeah, I mean, too many, too many pawn moves in the opening. You know, giving up control of too many key squares. That's what allowed me to jump on top early in this second game. 
Um, so yeah, two two fairly short games. Um, hope you take something away, you know, in terms of opening principles from these games. Um, talk to you next time, YouTube. This has been another installment of uh, Live Blitz by Greencastle Block, aka Matt Pullen.